What's up, everybody? I'm Jesse Kazam. Welcome back to another Escape from Tarkov video. This video is another one of our advanced map guides, and we're talking about reserve today. Now, these map guides sit kind of somewhere in the middle. They're not for brand new players that are just learning the basic mechanics of the game. I've got map guides for that. And uh, if you've played, you know, 2000 hours of Escape from Tarkov, you're probably not going to learn anything new here either, unless you haven't really touched reserve at all. This kind of sits in the middle. We're talking about PvP rotations and spawn guides and stuff like that. So if you have a few hundred hours in the game, you have the basic understanding, but you're looking to take your game to the next level, this is the guide for you. Um, I stream Escape from Tarkov on Twitch. All my links will be down below. I'd love to have you stop by and say, hey. And if you like the video, think about dropping a like or subscribing to the channel for more content like this. Subscribing really, really helps me out as a creator. So thank you so much to those that do that. But with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive right in. So if you've seen any of the other advanced map guides, you know, we always start with kind of like spawn PVP. PVP that happens right out of spawn in Escape from Tarkov is one of the most crucial things to be aware of, whether you want to engage in PVP or not. Um, the reality is that late in the wipe, um, because of the way the spawn system works currently, that's where a lot of people who are playing the game for that purpose for PVP are going to find that. So knowing where you spawn and then immediately being able to know where people are spawned around you or at least where people will potentially spawn around you is so crucially important. The spawns are just like every other map all the way around. Um, and the thing about reserve is, is that the movement isn't as linear like other maps because um, in most maps, you have spawn on one side of the map and you have to extract on the complete opposite side. And so that provides a very basic movement pattern from one side to the other because reserve isn't like that. It affects everything, including the spawns. Um, a lot of times people on other maps are going to spawn and then immediately start moving that direction so they can go through, get a task done, get some PVP or move out. Because of that, because you can extract the, the D2, the new underground extraction, the uh, cliff descent, if you've got a red rebel and a paracord, are just always there. You can kind of do them whenever. People are much more likely to maybe hold certain spots or hang around a certain area. There's not as much incentive to move around the map, which is sometimes what I love about Reserve and sometimes what I also find frustrating. So I'm kind of on the fence about it. I think Reserve is a great map. So that affects all the way down to even the spawns and how people play out of spawn. Um, oftentimes on uh, reserve people play really aggressive um, and you're looking for any spawn that you've got people on your left or your right you really really have to be careful unfortunately the way the spawns work right now is that a lot of them are really close together um, if you've got like for instance this bottom left hand spawn oftentimes you can have a team up here or on the other side of this fence and a team right here or a solo or whatever and so there can be a lot of fighting just like right out in this corner and same in this corner um, just immediately out of spawn. These are really, really rough spots. So you kind of have to be aware. Um, playing uh, playing slow can be effective, but if you're playing too slow, you're in a corner. So somebody can start nade spamming you. There's not a whole lot to do. So you kind of want to get somewhere. You can get in the bunkers. You can get up to the uh, pawn building right here or the black bishop or something. But pick a direction, stick to it. If you're constantly back and forth is there someone in front is there someone behind if, if you're doing that too much you're going to kind of get caught um, quick decisions out of spawn are often what's going to save you uh, even if you make a, the wrong decision just kind of like add that to your repertoire and start to learn and learn and learn because uh, a lot of the times you really are going to want to be able to make a quick decision make a move and go there um, up actually on the cliff descent near the the top bunker here near the dome it's a relatively safe area to spawn there's not a whole lot if you're up here you're most likely the only one up here um and you can get to a bunch of spots right here where you can kind of see anybody else pushing you so that's a pretty decent place to be um if you're spawned near here you can get right into these long buildings right here or right into one of the night buildings um, a lot of these spawns you can push right into the pond buildings if you need or the bishop buildings kind of getting inside getting situated can be helpful um, down in this corner is the same thing. You can spawn by the marked room right here by these bunkers, but you could have people crossing over the, the bunkers here, pushing this way. You could have these guys behind the train station pushing this way as well. Uh, so the spawn PVP, like with all maps, but especially reserved because people don't, they don't have as far of a place to go. If you get into PVP, and I've done this a lot, if you spawn on this side of the map, you get into that PVP immediately right off the bat, as soon as the, the game starts, you can just run right up to the cliff descent and extract like you never even have to touch the other 60 percent of the map you can just like boom boom or you hit some raiders boom straight up uh so it's an interesting kind of mechanic on how the map plays out 
but it, it's what shakes it up, which is, I think, ultimately a good thing. Um, so be careful outside of spawn, getting into a building, into somewhere, being getting to a place where you can kind of look, check your surroundings and check where all those other spawns are. Uh, just be careful because there are people that are pushing very specific spawns and very specific rotations. Um, other PvP hot zones, the thing about reserve is that almost anywhere can be. Um, you can basically, for the most part, once you're three, four, five minutes into a raid, kind of delete these big open areas. Not a whole lot of people, some people call these like the golf courses or stuff. Not a whole lot of people go out here. But um, because it's so dense as far as buildings, like the map itself is relatively small, but it's so dense with underground layers, with tons of buildings. All the buildings have multiple floors. It really provides a place where a ton of PVP can happen. Um, so the night buildings, a lot of PVP happens there. Um, the pawn buildings and the bishops, especially out of spawn, everybody's pushing inside. A lot of PVP can happen there. Uh, the train station and the K buildings right here uh, can be a lot of PVP as well. So um, everything, everybody kind of shifts in, shifts into the buildings um, and there's loot everywhere and there's potential for PVP everywhere. So listening for audio, listening for where shots are, where you think people are rotating. The dome is a you know, like a PVP zone in the sense that there can be people up there sniping. If you are up on the dome, you can have a view on so much of the map. The dome is actually in a really, in my opinion, good spot in the sense that you don't really have people. Um, it's not like you have people up there every raid where you really can't traverse the map, but it happens often enough that there are people up there sniping that you should always be checking it. Does that kind of make sense? So it's not like there's just always somebody up on the dome and you can't move around, uh, but it's not the flip side of that either where nobody ever snipes from up there so you don't have to worry about it. So that's kind of perfect where it's like you always need to be checking and be aware of what's going on and where people are um, and, and kind of checking that angle to be safe. As far as loot, there is an absolute ton of loot on reserve, as I'm sure you know, if you've got a decent grasp on the game. Um, but we know that loot oftentimes drives PvP because people are all rushing to the same spots. Um, the, the loot economy on reserve is crazy. There's just an infinite amount of ways to make money. There's like military and tech loot. There's even medical loot. There's hideout items and stuff. And then as we'll talk about later, there's even a ton of like gear, weapons, and armors that you can pull off of the AI um, in reserve as well. So... Uh, you know, obviously we've got the uh, the king building here, which oftentimes people call queen. I think technically it's king, but a lot of people call it queen. There's a ton of military tech loot in there. The top floors of some of the pawn buildings and the bishop buildings. There's two marked rooms, one in black pawn here, one in this building down in the bottom right corner. Uh, there's actually a third marked room that they added down below, which we'll talk about in a little bit. The night buildings can have a bunch of like miscellaneous loot. Um, the train station uh, K buildings can have like hideout loot, motors and fuel and stuff like that. Uh, there's a really, really dense loot economy here, which uh, can mean that it's super fun and uh, relatively easy to make money uh, if you play your cards right. Uh, but that oftentimes drives that PvP. The marked rooms are very contested for PvP during the start of the raid. Um, the uh, queen or king building here oftentimes has a ton of people moving through it. Um, a lot of times, yeah, you'll find like hatchet runners or pistolings that kind of run through and scoop up a lot of the loot. But either way, you're going to find a lot of people around these areas um, looking for that loot. There are a ton of keyed buildings on reserve. This isn't a video where we're necessarily going to break down every single Luthmon and every single key. There's actually some phenomenal guides out there if you're specifically looking for a loot run or for a breakdown of the loot on reserve. Uh, there are videos out there for you. I'm more talking about strategies and stuff like that for reserve because um, we could talk for 30 minutes just about the loot. Um, but there's a lot of loot. It drives a lot of PvP in these buildings. Like we said earlier, everything kind of compresses into the buildings. And then you can use these buildings to traverse the map um, basically from one end to the other if you want to. A huge driver for loot is the AI in reserve because one of the coolest things about reserve is that you're fighting scavs, player scavs, the scav raiders from labs, and the Gluhar scav boss. So these red uh, skulls here are all the places Gluhar can spawn. 
Guhar um, has, you know, six or seven guards on him. Um, it's it, They're just an absolute unit. They're super fun to fight. Of course, like most of the bosses, they can be aim body and frustrating. But one of the coolest things about it is that he has some of one of the most spawns of any of the other bosses. So it's really dynamic on if you're going to find him, where you're going to find him. He can be in either of the night buildings. He can be in the K buildings here at Black Bishop or Black Pond. And they can he can be traversing all outside here as well between these two buildings. And if the armored train comes, I've seen him basically book it from wherever he is, if he's still alive, towards the armored train once that comes later in the in the um, raid. So that's really cool. He's Because he's got so many guards and him, you can pull tons of loot, good ammo, good guns, good armor, good helmets. I mean, Vulcans, Altons, all sorts of stuff. And there's so many of them, so there's so much loot. And there are raiders that spawn as well, which is super cool in my opinion. They can spawn just randomly, like in this black pond building or between, like in the parking garage here between these. I've seen them just spawn. They're, they no, Nothing is needed to get them to spawn. You can hit the button that's right here, which triggers the alarm that opens up the hermetic door. That can oftentimes trigger them spawning around the train station. Uh, sometimes if that button hasn't been pulled, if the armored train comes, uh, a few raiders will spawn there as well. Raider loot, as we know, is really good. Good guns, good weapons, good armor. Between that and scav boss and the scavs and the loot on the map that's just there, uh, it's why this map ends up being played so often. It's so highly contested, especially late in wipe. It's a great place to make money. I just like the dynamic of it. I like never knowing whether what I'm going to get into, whether it's just PvP um, or some of my favorite raids where I was fighting raiders and boss and PvP all in the same raid. And when you extract, it just feels really, really good. If you are playing with a duo, I would highly, 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 highly recommend spending some time, duo or squad, learning these callouts, uh, the the names of the buildings. I've played hundreds of reserve raids, and I'm still very confused by them sometimes. If you're in the raid, if you're in the heat of the moment, learn what color, because there's two of a lot of things. There's two knights, there's two bishops, there's two pawns. So understanding when somebody calls out black pawn, wait, which one is that again? Or white knight, wait, which one is that again? That can be really really rough in the heat of the moment if you're trying to win a fight or get to cover and you don't know where your enemy is it can be frustrating so learning the call outs learning what each building is and then creating some call outs for some of these wider open areas um i would highly recommend that because uh, there are so anywhere you are there are so many angles you can be shot from learning to identify that and then adjust to that is going to be huge um, there's a ton of verticality to the map in the sense that there's a lot of underground tunnels and stuff like that. Um, the bunker that's underground right here, um, that kind of connects from this end to this end of the K buildings. It's pretty simple. You got the four big cages down there with a ton of loot and all the keys. Uh, that's not too complicated. They added the brand new tunnel system underneath this helicopter. Basically, it connects all the both of the bishop buildings the king building, and the two ponds. It connects all of them underground. This can be very confusing. If you have even played reserve a lot in the past, but they patched this in and you didn't really take the time to learn this, I would highly recommend learning it. Um, I would say even in offline mode, just running around, running around down there, it can get super confusing down there, especially when the lights are off. There can be raiders down there. The button triggers raiders. It can be incredibly, incredibly confusing. So uh, but learning this is awesome because it allows you to make incredible like flanks and plays because if you're getting sniped from one side from, you know, white pawn to black bishop, you can actually just move completely underground and get all the way up into that building and pull a flank on them. There's loot down there. There's raiders down there. There's an extraction down there. Learning the underground systems is is crucial and that's what makes reserve so great is it looks like a pretty simple map it looks small but because every building has multiple stories because there's two different underground tunnel systems in the you know on the map there's marked rooms everywhere it's very dynamic so even if you've played it a lot there's always more to learn there's always more ways to like hone your skills on reserve and it's super fun as far as recommended kits and stuff like that you can kind of do whatever you want this is kind of like shoreline where it supports almost every level of gameplay there's great places to snipe if you like bringing bolt actions or you know variable optics for sniping i like getting into close quarter battles so i'll normally bring like a red dot on a full auto weapon and just move from building to building to building not pushing out into the open too much so i can get into closer battles close to mid-range battles um, having a lot of grenades can be a really good thing because 
You might need to just push an enemy out of a place. You might need to push some raiders. You might need to just see where they are. And you want to use that as the audio cue. That can be huge. Long, long lasting painkillers, golden star, ibuprofens, propitol, stuff like that is going to be huge because a lot of times you might be down here, super hurt. You just want to fight. And now you've got to make it to cliff descent. If you don't want to go hit the button and then come down here, or you've got to make it to the other side here so you can go to the D2 underground exit. Um, the, the dynamic extracts, the fact that if you've got that red rebel, this is always here. And that trek all the way up there could be rough, you know, bringing an SJ six or a mule because you are definitely going to be overweight if you're surviving a solid raid, um, stuff like that could be super helpful. So, um, I hope that this helped. I hope that this wasn't just too much rambling. There's a lot to reserve. There's a lot of intricacy to it. It, once again, it looks like a small map, but there's so much depth to it. You can find anything. You can find high end PVP and the best type of PVE all on this map. Um, it's super fun. I hope they push more quests here eventually because there's not a whole lot of reason to go here if you're just doing quests. Um, but hopefully, if you've got some time to escape from Tarkov and you kind of understand how the mechanics work, this helped kind of explain a little bit of reserve, how it flows, how people move through the map, and how you can be more proficient on reserve. Thank you so much, as always, for taking the time to check out this video. If I missed anything, or if there's any other guides you'd like to see me make in the future, please drop a comment down below. And once again, if you liked the video, drop a like or subscribe for more content like this. And I do stream Escape from Tarkov on Twitch. All my links will be down below. I'd love to have you stop by and say hey. And we also have a super thriving Discord community. That link is down below as well. If you're looking for people to run raids with or get some questions answered, uh, if you're a new player all the way up to a veteran, we have a ton of people in there. It's an awesome place to be. Thank you so much again for stopping by, and I will see you all on the next one.